You're not still whinging on about being ill, are you? But we are ill, Grotbags. <laughs> My radar's all bunged up. Colin? Yes? The difference between your radar being bunged up and not being bunged up is about as startling as two identical badgers caught in a blackout. You have no sympathy. No, I don't. I have never had a day's illness in my life, and I don't see why anyone else should. Come off it, Mrs. G. What about your dizzy lumpkins? And your staggery doos? And your hot flops? Ah, uh, yes, well, I, I do have a touch of the dreaded diseases now and again. Yes, <clears throat> yes but I don't give in to them like you lot do. You do? No, I don't. While you lot whinge on and bleat, I suffer in muttered silence. The noisiest silence I've ever heard. Right! If you're that ill, then I must go and get some medicine. Where's my bottle of ye old greeny? Oh, no, not ye old greeny. You take one swig of that, you end up having the old bottle full. Why? Because it slides down in one big lump. It's very good for you. It was made and tested by the Grey Friars of Bootle. Yeah, but what they don't tell you is, before the Grey Friars tried it, they was all pink and rosy. Mrs. Grotbags, couldn't we try an alternative cure? What do you mean, Doris? Well, you know, reflexology, massage, or acupuncture. Acupuncture, right? I'll go get my electric drill. Or would you prefer skewers? I think I prefer a story. When I was little and ill, my mummy used to read me a story. It was my dad. He used to make them up. Make up? Couldn't he read? Yes, he could, Colin. It's just when you're a nettle, it's very difficult getting a library book. It's even harder getting them back. We had to sell the family cloche just to pay the fines. I had a favourite aunt who told me stories. Oh, she did all the voices. She was a hoot. Good at owls, was she? Mrs. Grotbags, read us a story to make us feel better, please. Oh, yes, please. Go on, bang us out a yarn. As if I didn't have better things to do. Oh, please. Oh, go on, Grotty. Go on. What sort of story do you want? One of Beetroot Potty's stories, oh, please. Which tale do you want? Do you want the tale of Peter Giblets? Or the tale of Benjamin Mixmatosis? Or the tale of the wild gerbil of Gloucester? Oh, the wild gerbil, please! Oh, yes, such a helpful little chappy. Yeah, marvellous the way he helped out the old cook. Yes, who'd forgotten all her recipes because she was too ancient. Calling out all the time, more nutmeg and spice, please, more nutmeg and spice, please. It's not really worth me reading it, is it? You know the story off by heart as it is. Oh, do. Are you sure? Mm. Then shut up. Are you sitting comfortably? Mm-hmm. Then I shall begin. <clears throat> Once upon a time, in the days of monster pies and serious trifles, there lived an old cook in the celebrated town of Gloucester. I have feelings, fly. I'm not heartless. You could have fooled me. I'm going to read to you from my library book before I have supper. Oh, thank you. What's it called? A Thousand and One Things to Do with a Dead Fly. Oh. Uh, uh, bless you. Uh, uh, oh. bless you. Uh, 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 bless you. Will you stop doing that? It's bad enough to keep going, a tissue, bless a tissue. Bless you, bless you. Look, I didn't stay dead. I just said, a tissue, bless a you, tissue. Bless you, Will you stop that? I don't want to be blessed by a half-congealed spell lump. Well, who do you want to bless you then? Someone proper, like a vicar. <laughs> bless you, my son. <sighs> and from that day began the luck of the old cook helped by the wild gerbil of Gloucester. The old cook, with his help, made the most wonderful liver and bacon, and she grew even stouter and became rich. Tell us about her greatest triumph. I will do if you shut up. But her greatest triumph was her Yorkshire puds, which were attached to little pastry anchors. <laughs> to stop, stop them, them floating, floating away. away. Look, if you keep interrupting this story, it's going to take the rest of our lives. A belt up. Now, where was I? You were just about to tell us how she lived happily ever after. 
She lived happily ever after until she got run over by a truck carrying condemned pet food. The end. No, she wasn't run over. That's not how it ends. You've got it wrong. Mm. That's wrong. Tough. You shouldn't keep interrupting. Finish it properly. Or read us another story. I've got better things to do. I haven't even opened my mail yet. It's Mr. Norman. I bravely collected it before relapsing. Oh, thank you, Doris. Yes, it lay it on thick, like your makeup with a trowel. What have we got here? Bills, bills, bills. I want a competition. I might have won a car if I go to Reykjavik to collect it. Bills and more bills. Oh, and a letter. Who's it from? Now, Colin. Yes? This is going to knock you sideways. But I won't know who it's from until I open the letter. Well, that didn't knock me sideways. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Cropbags. Open it. It could be important. Oh, it could be a love letter. Well, if it is, I'm not reading it to you while you've got a temperature. And let's see who it's from. I don't often get letters, you know. Dear Cousin Grotty, Good day to you and bonza news. I'm coming to Pommyland to visit you. Cousin Swagbag! She's coming here all the way from Australia. Well, I think it's a disgrace. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure I'll receive my knighthood in the next New Year's honours list. No, not your knighthood. <laughs> That's all we need. Sir Lumpy of Neesden. No, I mean Mrs. Grotbag's lethargy. Lethargy? Isn't that a small town outside Delhi? No, lethargy means laziness. Grotbag's has got her cousin Swagbag coming from Australia. Oh, very big Australia. Even bigger, your mouth. I say, do you think there'll be boomerangs all round? There we now look, if cousin Swagbag's like the rest of this madhouse, there'll be crazed killer wallabies all round. Mm -hmm. And homicidal koala bears dropping from the chandeliers with blood-curdling cries of whinging palms! Oh, and bandicoots and alarming possums mugging one another in the lounge dinette. Australia? Isn't that where budgies come from? Rum things, budgies. Don't be so soup, soup. Supercilious? Yes, and soup, soup. Superior? Yes, that's right. She hasn't got a single thing ready. It's us that'll be shown up. We'll have egg on our faces. And soup, soup. Supercilious? Soup, soup. Superior? No! With this egg on our faces, will there be soup? <sighs> While we were all feeling ill, you might at least have got Cousin Swagbag's room ready for her. I don't really want to. Why ever not? I'm not telling. Oh, go on, Grotty. Maybe we can help. Well... You know, I told you all not ever to tell Porky Pies. Yes, you always say, never tell a lie, Colin, or the great angry wasp of untruth will come along and sting your tongue. That's what you say. And then you go on to say... Colin! Yes? The great angry wasp of untruth will be outside any second. Perhaps you just fly through the open window and tell him no stings today, would you, dear? Will do. Chucks away! <laughs> Here, Grotty, telling Colin that window was open was a bit of a porky, wasn't it? Yes, and making up stories about mythical creatures like the great wasp of untruth. Well, that's a bit of a fib. Ah! Oh, I'm paying for my untruths now, aren't I? What untruths, Grotty? My untruths to Cousin Swagbag. You see, we went to witch school together, and she was good at everything. She was good at spells and, and sewing and magic and she was ever so good at games in fact she won everything she won the tennis and the hockey and the ashes the ashes yes of the sports pavilion we burnt down oh dear and then when we left school she went to australia she emigrated and she became a chefess and her chip sarnies are the toast of alice springs so what lies did you tell her oh illustrious greenie I told her I was the greatest cook in England. Oh, no. The great wasp of untruth is coming back again. Hedgehog, that was a very cruel and silly thing to do. You're not a great cook, Grotty. 
You burnt the water when you boiled it for the tea. I know. And you burnt the salads. I know. And your roast chicken was raw. Yeah, but every time I opened the oven, it flew away. So, Cousin Swagbag is expecting a feast when she gets here, eh? Yes. I'm going to be shown up rotten as usual. Unless. Unless what, Norman? Well, it was that story reminded me. The wild gerbil of Gloucester. Yeah, she couldn't manage the Lord Mayor's banquet. And then the wild gerbil came along and helped her out. Yes, but that was just a story, Norman. I mean, I can't just go down to the job centre, can I? And ask for a wild gerbil who knows what he's doing with catering. No, but you could magic one up. Or you could magic up a koala. Yes, that should be good for authentic Australian cooking. You'll really score one over Cousin Swagbag. Doris! You crafty Clara! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. And hooray! I'm still alive! Say that in an hour, Fly, and I'll call it indigestion. Oh. Right, I'm here to do me incantations. <laughs> Dear lady, what a pleasure to see your stately green form in this vicinity. Shut up, Lumpy. I'm trying to concentrate on my magic. Oh, I hear and I obey. Pies and spices from my parlour. Send me at once a nice koala. Good day, large green lady. Good day, little koala. Good day to everyone. Good day to my public. Good day. Shut it, Lumpy, or it'll be goodbye permanently. Oh, dear lady, you make my blood run cold. Shame to waste it. I'd better go and cool some champagne. Now, little koala. Good day, lady. Good day. Now, we've done all that, dear. You see, what I've asked you here for, I want you to cook up an amazing feast out of all the Australian delicacies. What? Both of them? Well, both of them and some more, yes. Can you do it? Ah, easy peasy dingo squeezy. I bet you're amazed at being magicked here from down under. Not really. Happens all the time. Last week I helped out the mighty wizard Wonga. The mighty wizard Wonga, eh? Well, I'd better let you get on then. I've got cousin Swagbag coming at tea time. No sweat, lady. No sweat. What a beautiful spread! It was nothing. It will be once Mrs. Grotbags tucks in. I bet the mighty wizard Wonga didn't have a spread like this. Oh, the wizard Wonga didn't want help with food. What help did he need? He wanted help with his fireworks. He wanted bigger bangs. I hope you didn't get the firework ingredients mixed up with the banquet ingredients by accident. Oh, no! <gasps> I did it on purpose. I've invented firework food. What? <laughs> Well, it works, then. Oh! Ah! <laughs> I'm Grotbag, queen of all things magic. Although the outcome is sometimes tragic. Forget about Merlin, forget about the wig. You can tell with his spell, I'm the fish. You better agree or I'm telling you that. I'm going to sit on you and I'll squash you flat. Okay, Blue Eyes, this is a rage. Play it again, Sam. You are a bold little brat. I hate brats. I'm got bags, prettiest thing you've seen. My smooth complexion, grey as green. My gorgeous figure and razor sharp brain. My French perfume, it's coke to drain. When I share my motto's mine alone, what's yours is mine. What's mine's my own? Hang about, what are all those names going up and down on my screen? How dare you, I am the greatest witch in the world. I'm the most wonderful singer. Get them off. Get them off. Now. Yes. I thought I'd say something slightly serious now, and I need a slightly serious sound effect for it. It's not, it's not terribly serious. I mean, it's, it's just a... It's a point worth making, and it's this. Uh, Grotbags is Rolf's guest on Rolf's Cartoon Club tomorrow, and the reason for that is because of Halloween. Some people think that Halloween is a bad idea, but Halloween is just a little bit of fun, and it's a bit of a joke, and it's got to do with witches and things like that, and that's the end of it, okay? Oh, what have we got next? Good old Wolf! Yee-hee!